Chana Shalakaya Chakzur Militangena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakau Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Bhagavad Gita. This is Unit 1, Lesson 3. So today we want to cover texts, the, the first verses of the second chapter. We'll see how it goes, how many verses we can cover. All right, so review. Ye yesterday we spoke about Arjuna's four reasons for not fighting. Right? You remember? Who remembers? Compassion, sinful activities. Sinful reactions. Oh, sinful reactions. And no enjoyment. Yes, enjoyment. And then? Destruction and, uh, of dynasty. Destruction of dynasty. All right. And there were different progressive steps leading to the destruction of the dynasty. Do you remember? First is the um, elders are destroyed and killed. Begins with the death of the elders, yes. And then? And then there will not be any, any turning conception. With so the, with tradition the, will be because of that. With the death of the elders, what happens? People become irreligious. People take up irreligious. People take up irreligious practices. And what happens after that? I d your voice is not clear at all. Degradation of women. Maybe you need to speak a little slower, Mataji. Degradation of women. Degradation of women, she's Th saying, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. All right. And the, the de degradation of the women, then, the result is... <coughs> Unwanted progeny. Right. Unwanted progeny. And then some more things happen. And the community projects and welfare activities are devastated. Right. And finally? And finally, destroys the family traditions. Everyone goes to hell. The whole, the whole society becomes hellish. All right, then we spoke about women not being very intelligent, and we said that devotee doesn't apply to devotee ladies. They're the intelligent class of women. All right, we're going to go on to the second chapter. Here's the outline of the chapter. It begins with uh, some more doubts from Arjuna. We heard four doubts from Arjuna. There's there's a few, some more, but within the first ten verses, I think it comes about chapter, verse number seven or eight, we'll hear Arjuna starting to surrender to Krishna and taking advantage of Lord Krishna's association. So that's the first ten verses of the second chapter. And then from sloka 11 up to 30, we will hear about Jnana Yoga being described. And we'll hear about the distinction between the body and the soul. 
Now this is important because this distinction between the body and soul, this knowledge is going to uh, defeat Arjuna's argument about compassion. So Lord Krishna, in the very beginning of his teaching, he establishes clearly the distinction between the body and the soul. And it's such a basic point, Lord Krishna doesn't need to cover it again. And then after talking about the distinction between the body and the soul, Sorry, they're having elections here, so there's a lot of uh, politi political propaganda going on. Anyway, text 31 up to 38 describe Karmakanda. Lord Krishna will talk about Karmakanda. He wants to encourage Arjuna that uh, if you fight, you, even if you lose, you can go to heaven. Because if you die on the battlefield, then the Kshatriyas, they're guaranteed a place in heaven because they give up their bodies on the battlefield. So the Karmakanda, Lord Krishna is speaking about Karmakanda, the, enjoying the, the results of the work. The results of the work, the results of fighting, you go to heaven even if you lose. <coughs> and if you win, then you enjoy the kingdom. So that's karmakanda, which is not a spiritual practice, but it's Vedas, it's in the Vedas. The Vedas does talk a lot about karmakanda, but it's not a spiritual activity. And then 39 up to 53, we'll hear about buddhi yoga. Buddhi yoga, I mean the yoga of knowledge. Buddhi, I think, with buddhi meaning intelligence, intelligence in acting, knowing what to do, what's the proper action to be done. And then the rest of the chapter from text 54 up to the end of the chapter, 72, Arjuna will ask a question and Lord Krishna will describe the Sthita Dir Muni, Sthita Dir Muni, one who is fixed in knowledge. Arjuna wanted to know about what is the nature of one who has achieved transcendence. So that will be described at the end of the second chapter. Anyway, today we'll try to get into the first two sections here about Arjuna's doubts and then a little bit on knowledge. All right. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Hare Krishna What is the Sanskrit name of this chapter? Uh, I can't remember right now. I'll tell you. Like, when Sankhya I get, Yoga. Huh? Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya oh, Yoga, oh, right. Yes, Sankhya, Sankhya Yoga. Thank you, Mother. Yeah. Thank you, Mother. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Chapter summary. Uh, someone can read for us the summary of the second chapter. In the second chapter, the Lord explains knowledge of the soul, the method of realizing Atma, Nishkama Karma, and the characteristics of the Sthita Pragna, liberated soul. All right. So nishkam karma, nishkam karma, <coughs> karma, dutiful judi performed work without attachment to the results. Nishkam karma yoga is very close to bhakti yoga. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here's the first verse. Someone read? Yes, Mother. Nima, Mother. 
Sanjay seems to understand who is Lord Krishna, <laughs> right? Sanjay is uh, describing, is it, you, well, is it actually Sanjay who is describing or is this simply Srila Vyasadeva's own literary contribution? We're not sure anyway. Uh, Prabhupada does pick up on the word though in the purport. Madhu Sudana. The word Madhu Sudana is significant in this verse. Lord Krishna killed the demon Madhu. And now Arjuna wanted Krishna to kill the demon of misunderstanding that had overtaken him in the discharge of his duty. All right, so Lord Krishna is famous. One of the names of Lord Krishna, Madhusudana. There's some demon called Madhu. Of course, Madhu also means nectar. Or sometimes there's a story about a bumblebee called Madhusudana. So anyway, <coughs> Arjuna wanted Krishna to kill this demon of doubt or misunderstanding. So, Srila Prabhupada talks about compassion and there is uh, different kinds of compassion in the world. There is genuine compassion and there's imitation or false compassion. People often talk about being compassionate and they think being compassionate means to provide for the sense gratification of all the conditioned souls. They think real compassion is to provide money for people so that they can go and go ahead and and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes and eat all kinds of animal flesh. They think, oh, that's good. It's being compassionate. Oh, so, sorry for interfering. Rishikesh Prabhu seems to be having some questions. Okay, but when it when the time comes, we'll take questions. Com okay. Compassion, Prabhupada speaks about compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless. A man fallen in the ocean of Neshines cannot be saved simply by rescuing his outward dress. So the outward dress is compared to the gross material body. One who does not know this and laments for the outward dress is called a sudra, or one who laments unnecessarily. Hmm. So lam lamenting unnecessarily. We lament for the body. So this 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 is an important point in uh, this beginning of the second chapter to understand what is actual compassion. 
uh, Krishna consciousness is a spiritual organization and we're not meant for just doing welfare activities. When Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada was present on the planet in the times of the Gaudiya Math, at that time there was a famine in Bengal. So he was approached that he should contribute towards the famine relief, but he would not do it. He said, no, he said, that, is, that is mundane welfare activities. We are a spiritual organization. So the modern world, they give a lot of importance to caring for the body, to <coughs> taking care of the material body, the gross material body. They don't take care of the soul. Right? What are some examples of that? What does, uh, examples does Prabhupada give about taking care of the body but neglecting the soul? Burden the cage, Mara. Right. Yes, the bird in the cage. That's right. That's just what I was thinking about, the bird in the cage. And so the, the lady had the bird in the cage and she took care of the cage and she put a nice bell in the cage and kept the cage clean. But she didn't put any food there. And so the same way people take care of the body, they decorate the body, but they, can't, they do nothing for the soul. They forget about the most important part, which is the soul. So uh, this, is, this is a problem. This is called misplaced compassion. I remember in Srila Prabhupada's time, uh, there was a, what happened, there was a, it was a time of, a, there was a big uh, famine in Bangladesh. And so, George Harrison, the one who donated the Bhaktivedanta Manor, he organized a big concert, a concert with many famous musicians, all his friends, they all came and performed. And they had a very big concert at the Madison Square Gardens in New York. And they recorded everything and they made a record and they sold a lot of copies and made a lot of money and gave it all to Bangladesh. But Prabhupada said, he said, he said, there's already so much oil on the hair and you put more oil on the hair. It doesn't do any good. He said, just put giving money there to... It's not going to solve the problem. And so this is the situation. People don't know what is actual compassion. And they lament, they take care of the body and neglect the most important life, part of life, the soul. So this was the first verse of the second chapter. Sanjay was speaking, right? Sanjay was speaking. Here we see Sanjay, and he was describing how Krishna speaks to Arjuna because he sees Arjuna full of compassion. So he's going to correct Arjuna. He's going to try to bring him out of ignorance, right? So can we have somebody else read the second verse? Can he read what? Oh, very nice, very good. Go ahead, read the English. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead, no, they lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. Yes. Akirti karam Arjuna. Akirti karam. Infamy. Not fame, but infamy. 
you become infamous. You're not going to go to higher planets. You're not going to go to swarg, aswargyam, anaryam justam aswargyam, aswarg. So swarga is heaven, but you're not going to go to heaven. So what's going to happen? You're going to become infamous, akirti karam arjuna. And then arjuna is described, anaryam justam, you are not being an Aryan, Ary, the Aryan, the Aryan means the one who knows the value of life, Aryans. Sometimes they talk about the Aryan civilization or, or even the Aryan invasion. Sometimes people claim that the Aryans were people who came from the West and brought knowledge and culture to India. Rather, it was just the opposite. The culture and knowledge was already there in India and it spread to the West. And so Arya, the Aryans are those who know the value of life. So Anaryam means you're not, you don't know the value of life. You're waste, you've wasted the life. So Lord Krishna is asking to Arjuna, where have these impurities come from? Kutashtva. From where? Kashmalamidam. So Lord Krishna is <laughs> being a real friend to Arjuna. He's pointing out his error in thinking. Uh, Prabhupada explains Krishna chastises Arjuna in two verses. We just read the second verse, but also in the third verse, we'll also hear how Krishna continues to chastise Arjuna. Mm -hmm. Now, usually if somebody tells you off, you won't like it. But Arjuna, he accepted it. He was happy. He appreciated that Lord Krishna is really trying to help him. Someone can read for us, please. In the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arjuna's lamentation for his kinsmen is certainly unbecoming, and therefore Krishna expressed his surprise with the word kutaha, where from. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. We have a bit more, Maharaji. You can keep reading. Okay. Anarya Jishtam. Not befitting an Aryan. The word Aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a civilization based on spiritual realization. Aswargyam. Arjuna's impurities will not lead him to Svargaloka. Akirti Karam. Such a behavior will only cause him infamy. Vishami. In such a critical situation, with so many depending on you, how do you manifest such impurities? Kashmalam. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, so Lord Krishna's uh, words are quite, quite heavy on him. He's, Lord Krishna is uh, really pointing out the defect in Arjuna's thinking. And Lord Krishna uses vishame. So many are depending on you. How could you show these impurities? Where did they come from? So Prabhupada talks about accepting chastisement. You know, we don't all, most of us, we don't like chastisement. But actually chastisement is, it's a very good thing for us to be chastised. Sometimes it's said that the person who glorifies is, the person who praises you and glorifies you, he's your enemy. But somebody points out your shortcomings and your faults, he's really your friend. And we should appreciate that more. Could we have someone else read, please? He was thinking that by showing that compassion, he will be eulogized by Krishna. But Krishna condemned it just the opposite. 
In other words, Krishna is very strict also. That is the qualification of Krishna and his associate. Vajrad apikathora and Kusumad apikamala. Softer than a flower and harder than a thunderbolt. So Krishna is not lenient to his friend or to his devotee because that leniency will not help the devotee. Wait, there's a bit more. Yeah. So, see, this sort of strictness from God is sometimes misunderstood because we are always accustomed to accept what is immediately very pleasing, but we should not be disappointed. We shall stick Krishna. That is Arjuna's position. Srila Prabhupada's lectures 2.1 to 10, Los Angeles, 1968. All right. Maybe you can think of some example in Krishna Leela where somebody else was, ha, had to be chastised. Or any, anything based on Shastra, maybe pra, even Prabhupada Leela, where a devotee is being chastised and how he accepts the chastisement. Like Brahma and Indra Maharaj. Hmm? Like Brahma and Indra, you are saying Maharaj. Brahma and Indra? Yeah, both of them were chastised by Krishna. Well, I don't quite agree with you. I don't think Lord Krishna did actually chastise them very much, did he? Um, Kaliya, Yeah, Kaliya. Yeah, Lord Krishna certainly sent Kaliya out and sent him away, told him not to come there, not to be in the Yamuna, get out from there. He sent him off to the ocean. Yeah, Chota Haridas Thakur. Huh? Chota Haridas Thakur. Chota Haridas, yes. He got severe chastisement, right? Rejected by Lord Chaitanya. And when he, when he gave up his body in the Sangam, then Lord Chaitanya said he has done the right thing. So that was harder than the thunderbolt, right? Uh, then even Balaram actually chastising uh, Kauravas during Lakshmana. I mean, the Balaram chastised the Kauravas when? During the marriage of one of Krishna's sons, actually. They, he was arrested, actually. I don't remember the name. Samba, I guess. Samba, Samba. Samba, 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 I guess. Yeah, Samba wanted to marry Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhana. And Lord Balaram had to come there and at first they did not take Lord Balaram very seriously but then Lord Balaram took his plough in his hand and began to threaten to drag the whole of Hastinapur into the Yamuna and, and so he, yes he, he, uh, he, he really frightened the Kauravas and they quickly brought Samba and the girl and there was also the example with Lord Balaram when he chastised Yamuna. He told Yamuna to come, come here, and she didn't come. So Lord Balaram took his plow and said, I will break you into small streams. And he began to take his plow and break the Yamuna into little streams. At that time the Yamuna came and fell at Lord Balaram's feet and apologized. And uh, in Prabhupada's Lil, we, uh, we see many disciples being chastised by uh, Prabhupada himself, actually. For example, Ta Tamal Krishmara also was many, many times chastised. Should we take that way or no? is it just... What do you mean, take that way? Is it a chastisement or uh, we should not take that like... Uh, you said like Brahmas and uh, Indras. Uh, Leelas were not actual chastisement by Maharaj. So how do we take, uh, say for example, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was uh, 
once said that you are thinking yourself very great, but you are not that much at all. Saying that, comparing him with the entire universe and all this. Oh, uh, yeah. This one person thinks he's the center of the universe. Yeah. Yeah, Prabhupada talked. He pointed out the insignif our insignificant position, describing how the material world is one fourth of the whole spiritual manifestation. And there's an infinite number of universes in the material world. And in one of the tiny universes, there's one tiny planet Earth. And on the tiny planet Earth, there's one country called USA. And in USA, there's one city called Los Angeles. And in Los Angeles, there's one street called Watsika Avenue. And on Watsika Avenue, there are many, many houses. And there's one temple there. And in that one temple, there's one temple commander who thinks he's the center of the universe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, that was a very instructive example. Actually, of course, Prabhupada had a lot of love for Tamal Krishna Maharaj. Tamal Krishna Maharaj rendered a lot of personal service to Srila Prabhupada, particularly at the end of Srila Prabhupada's Leela. He spent the whole last year with Srila Prabhupada, taking care of him and comforting him and making arrangements to keep him and encourage him to stay with us. Uh, but there was one time Srila Prabhupada himself was chastised by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and Prabhupada tells us about that. Do you know that? Anybody know that pastime? Is it about taking sannyas? No. No. Uh, Prabhupada, when he said our country is under the um, administration of the Britishers, we have to free our country first. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Bhagavad no, chastised. No, 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 that's not the example. That was a philosophical debate. But there was a, there was a particular instance where Prabhupada was chastised. Well, Prabhupada. No. Yeah? Can you speak clearly? Speak up. Can you speak, Prabhu? Actually, the mic seems having some issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Then, Hare Krishna, audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 go ahead. Okay, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I, I heard, I don't remember clearly, but I heard that once when Prabhupada was sitting in class of Bhakti Sansarasri Maharaj and maybe uh, something happened, so then Maharaj, uh, Bhakti Sansarasri Maharaj told, okay, what do you think you have brought, brought me with your money or something? Uh, I'm not clearly really remember this. Okay, I'll tell something you. Something like this happened. Yeah, you've got it. They said, this is right. Uh, what happened, Prabhupada was sitting, listening to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati give a discourse. And there was an elderly man sitting behind Prabhupada and he touched Prabhupada on the shoulder to get Prabhupada's attention. So Srila Prabhupada turned round to talk to him and immediately Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati stopped lecturing and pointed to the two of them and said, you two, he said, do you think you, 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 you don't care to listen to my lecture? And he said, he said to the elderly gentleman sitting behind Prabhupada who touched Prabhupada on the back, he said, do you think because you donate five rupees every month that you have purchased me? And then he said to our own Srila Prabhupada, he said, do you want to come up here and talk? And Srila Prabhupada said it was the moment of great, greatest mercy. He said, I, I, I was so, I was so shocked, I was so taken aback. It was such a chastisement from he, he said it was the moment of greatest mercy from my Guru Maharaj. He was pointing out to me how careful and how we must give full attention to hearing and nothing should distract us. So anyway, that's the 
Prabhupada himself being chastised and he appreciated it as the greatest mercy from his guru. So being chastised, here you see Arjuna being chastised by Lord Krishna because Arjuna is lamenting for what is not worthy of grief. Oh, Krishna, what's that? All right, here's text number three. Lord Krishna continues to chastise Arjuna. Someone like to read? Madhiji, why don't you read again? You read so nicely that there. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. You are my Klebhyam asma gamam pārta naitatvai upādhyate chudram hrudaya dhaur palyam tyakto tishtata param tapa tishtata param tapa One or two mistakes. Prabhuji, I want to make some mistakes. I want to correct and read again. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. Then Do not yield to this degrading importance. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, old chastisizer of the enemy. Yes. Mm. So, this Ridaya Durbayam, this is the, the weakness of heart. And this is a big problem. This is one of the anarthas which we have in chanting the holy name. This weakness of the heart. Mm -hmm. Weakness of the heart that we're. We're so attached to material things. So Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna, give up this degraded impotence. It does not become you. Lord Krishna is describing, is encouraging Arjuna, you're Partha, you're, son of, you're from a great family. Your son of Partha means what? Sanaprata, actually. Kunti. This is his aunt's uh, son. Yeah, Kunti. son of Kunti. So from he's from a royal family, a great family. He should not become. Uh, he shouldn't give up. He shouldn't become influenced by this weakness of the heart. So he calls him Parantapa, chastiser of the enemy, conqueror of the enemy. Uh, so this is Lord Krishna's chastisement. All right, Krishna reminds Arjuna of his great heritage by addressing him as Partha. Krishna did not want Arjuna to become an unworthy son of a Kshatriya. You should be worthy. You're born in a great family. You're a Kshatriya. You have a noble birth. You should exhibit the qualities of that birth. Don't be influenced by the material energy. Here, Lord Krishna chastises Arjuna in these two verses. Shudram Ridaya Durbhoyam. Arjuna might argue that he would give up the battle on the grounds of his magnanimous attitude for the most respectable Bhishma and his relatives. But Krishna considered that sort of magnanimity mere weakness of heart. So Arjuna may argue like that, that I'm being magnanimous. I'm not, because I have so much respect for Grandfather Bhishma and for all my relatives, so I'm giving up the battle. But Krishna said, ah, that is not magnanimous. That is just your weakness of heart. It is your sentiment 
But that sentimental attachment, it is not noble, it is not being magnanimous, it's just the opposite. So Lord Krishna is pointing out the defect in Arjuna's uh, mood. So he uses the word parantapa, chastiser of the enemy. He's meant for that. All right, going ahead, text number four. Someone else like to read for us? Oh, we had a question. There was a question before we go on. Hare Krishna Maharaj, can we ask now? Yes, okay. Maharaj, uh, in the first book, there was when, when uh, we were reading Prabhupada's message on the slide, uh, there was a mention of that uh, Krishna killed Mother Sudhana. And uh, I have noted this Madhusudan word has been uh, used a few times in Bhagavad Gita. But Madhusudan seems to be an important pastime because the way Madhusudan has been used in Bhagavad Gita, it seems it's a very important pastime. But we don't find this pastime anywhere in. Krishna book or Kanto 10. Do you know where to find the whole pastime for this, please? Uh, we're not given much information. We're just told there was a demon Madhu who was killed by one of, by not not Lord Krishna himself, but by one of the avatars and one of the Vishnu avatars. And someone killed the demon Madhu. There were there was actually Madhu and Kaitaba, right? Two demons. And they were killed by the Lord. So there are some references. Maybe you could do a search on the Veda base. Did you try that? I, I tried the Google search. I came up with some information, not authentic again. But yet, uh, all it says on the internet is that Madhu and Kaitaba were two two uh, demons, one came as a vex from the left ear and one from the right ear. Uh -huh. And they were putting Brahma in his, this is after Brahma had manifested. They were disturbing the meditation of Brahma and that's when Brahma prayed to Vishnu, which is Colonel uh, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, and Garbhodakshai Vishnu killed them. Uh -huh. So killed both the demons. Now this is again from Internet University, nothing from Rupada authentic. There is a reference in Kanto 3, when Brahmaji is speaking to Devahuti and Kardamani, where he mentions both these demons in separate, separate uh, texts, but the pastime is not mentioned there. It just says, oh, the killer of Madhusudana, or the killer of Kaitaba, but that's it. Nothing like a wax coming out of the ear as a demon or yeah. where this pastime is. Yeah. So we can understand it's not very important. So, Maharaj, the way it is mentioned, I think one, two, three, four, five times in Bhagavad Gita, which I noted. Ah, the name may be there. Use the name. That's all right. It doesn't mean the pastime is important. The name is to address the Lord, that the Supreme Lord's being described, and how he kills the demons. How, which, you know, the circumstances of killing the demon, that's not so important. The main thing is that it's the name of the Lord and he's known to be the killer of the demon. Like for example in Kanto 10 or Krishna book, each demon seems to represent some vice. Well, Bhaktivinoda of... Thakur has said like that, but it's not, you know, it's that, that's Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's own presentation of that. That's Krishna Deem, Krishna Lila, but these are different. Madhu and Kaitaba, they're, they're not directly being killed by Krishna. Thank you, the demons in Braja are different. Those demons in Braja pastimes, those are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maharaj, some more ray, uh, hands were raised actually. Okay. Uh, Ishtadev Prabhu, you want to go? Yeah.
Hare Krishna. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Maharaj, I wanted to ask like regarding compassion you mentioned like when Amin was there, uh Bhakti Sansatu Thakur, I mean he said that we uh give only spiritual uh, help. So like we see in Corona time like uh Ispan distributed I mean temples all over the world distributed so many I mean prashadam and food so 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 like I mean uh like that is also like helping in times of need. So how to understand this? Like we can distribute prashad and even Prabhupada said that in Mayapur, uh, within 10 miles, no one should go hungry. So but how to take that? That's why during the corona we were distributing prasad because Prabhupada said nobody should go hungry in the area of Mayapur. So we did that. And in, in New Delhi, they did also a big, very big uh, distribution of prasadam during the corona time. Good. Yeah. They did a lot of, it, it, you know, where, where there's the opportunity, where, the, you know, like, you know, they couldn't do much, they couldn't do much more active preaching at that time because of the situation. So they took advantage according to time and circumstances. That particular time was appropriate to go out and distribute prasadam. They had the they had the money. They had the support. They had the means to do it. They organized it in a very wonderful manner. And so it was to their credit. The, of course, the idea, of course, is to give people Krishna consciousness, to encourage people to have more faith in Krishna consciousness. But our real business, our real business is giving the holy name and giving spiritual knowledge. So we... Thank you. Yeah, and uh, Devjit Prabhu, you want to... Hare Krishna Maharaj. So I have a question regarding uh, the last uh, uh, verse. Uh, so, uh, I think Krishna is reminding Arjuna of his family heritage and how great uh, his family is. And, uh, so, Rita, so, Rita, the Dorbalyam doesn't uh, suit uh, Arjuna. So, I just want to ask, like, reminding of family heritage, isn't this again on the bodily platform? So, we are, like, uh, is it like, uh, like Krishna focusing on the bodily platform? Just wanted to understand it. Well, we learn from Bhagavad Gita that, you know, somebody who's been a devotee in their previous life, and, but not successful, maybe a fallen yogi, that they take birth in a particular kind of family. You know, we, we read, for example, somebody who's quite advanced in yoga but still not perfect, he would be born in a family of devotees. So from the very beginning of his birth, he has the opportunity to cultivate Krishna consciousness. So the the, the, the birth does have does have some significance, and you can understand persons something of a person's characteristic traits often just simply by the the birth, which they which they have. So men, mentioning to Arjuna. Because at that particular point, Arjuna is on the bodily platform, and so he's on the bodily platform, so remind him about it. Okay, you're on the bodily Remember what body you're in, that you're representing your family, and you're from a family of great Kshatriyas. Arjuna was in the bodily concept of life. All right, remember who you are, that you're a Kshatriya, you're meant to fight. And so it was quite relevant to bring it up at that point to Arjuna, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, and Maharaj, uh, related to this, uh, is he referring to Kunti Maharani as uh, his aunt and saying that you are related to me also, so don't uh, have a weakness of heart? Is it the way we have to understand the other part of I'm, I'm not quite getting what, what your point is. Could, could you say? Uh, and when, when he says about Hradaya Daurvalyam, he says, pa, uh, Partha, right? Uh -huh. So Partha means the son of Kunti, and in this case, Krishna probably is referring Kunti is my aunt, and you are my aunt's son, and don't have a weakness of heart. Is it like that, also, Maharaj? Yes. Yeah. 
yeah, it shouldn't be a weakness of heart. That weakness of heart is just the, the emotion, the sentiment, the sentimental affection. And so Krishna wants to bring him out from that kind of mentality. He wants, he's pointing out to him that it's, it's not really fitting for someone in Arjuna's position to have that kind of sentiment. Thanks, thanks, Mother. All right, so we'll go ahead, text number four. Can we have some volunteer to read for us? Amrit Mahatma Prabhu, you were trying to read that time. Krishna Maharaj, Pranam. Arjun Uvacha, Katham Vishmam Aham Sankhe, Dhonam Cha Madhusudana, Shubhi Pratiyotsyami Pujar Havari Sudhana Arjun said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counter attack with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drone, who are worthy of my worship? Mm. Hare Krishna Thank you. Yes. So O killer of Madhu, Madhusudan is again mentioned. Dronam cha Madhusudhanam. Aham sanki. Hmm. Battle men like Bhishma and Drona. Bhishma aham sanki. Dronam cha Madhusudhanam. So Bhishma and Drona, they're certainly worshipable by Arjuna. And Arjuna is saying, how can I, how can I kill these kind of people? I'm, I should worship them, puja, varisudana. I shouldn't try to fight them. I should worship them. Varisudana, killer of the enemies. O Krishna, you also kill enemies in battle, but not men worthy of worship, such as Ugrasen and Sandipani Muni. Right? Who's Ugrasen? Father of Krishna, maternal grandfather. Yes, grandfather of Lord Krishna, maternal grandfather. And who's Sandipani Muni? Spiritual master. Spiritual master of Lord Krishna. Yes, Teacher. the guru, right? Sandipani Muni. Okay. So, why is he mentioning these two names in particular? Because Arjuna was forced to kill Bhishma and Dronacharya. Right. So Bhishma and Drona. Drona was a teacher of Arjuna, like Sandipani Muni was a teacher of Krishna, and uh, Bhishma is the grandfather, like Ugrasen's grandfather of Lord Krishna. So, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti says like that, that uh, you also kill enemies, but you don't kill people like Ugrasen and Sandipani Muni. Prabhupada lectures. Someone read Prabhupada's lecture. You kill demon Madhu, therefore your name is Madhu Sudana. But you are asking me to kill my grandfather and teacher. That is the hint. It is all right that your name is Madhu Sudana. You killed one demon whose name was Madhu. But who are? But you are asking me uh, Bhishma Sudana. Bhishma is my grandfather and uh, uh, Drona Shudana. Shudana means killer. So how can I be that? Bhagavad Gita 2.1 to 10, Los Angeles, November 25, 1968. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Bhishma Sudana. You are asking me to be Bhishma Sudana and Drona Shudana. Oh, so how can I be like that? Very nice argument. How will you maintain yourself, Arjuna, if you give up your ancestral kingdom? If Lord Krishna says like that to Arjuna, how will, what will Arjuna say? How will he maintain himself? Because Arjuna is indicating he's going to give up his kingdom. So Lord, he will, yes? He will say, I will beg, actually. Right, he will say, I'll beg. Here we go. Here's the verse.
All right, so text number five. Guru Nahadvahi Mahanubhavan Shreyo Bhuktam Baik Baiksham Apihaloke Hadvarta Kamams to Gurun Ehaiva Bunji Abogan Rudira Padkradikdan It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. So this is Arjuna's response that Krishna may be thinking, how will you maintain my how will you maintain yourself arjuna arjuna said i can beg i would simply live by begging better than to live at the life at the cost of the lives of such great souls so this this would appear to be noble thinking on the part of arjuna quite you know quite impressive arguments from arjuna that you know, why should I want to kill great souls who are my teachers? And he, he describes that even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. They, they have their material desires, Bhishma, Drona. They've been living there in the palace of Duryodhana. And they've been living off Duryodhan, off Dhritarashtra, they've been maintained by them. So Arjuna is describing that, that though they have, they, they desire worldly gain. But still he said they are superiors. And if they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. Bun Bunjiya Bogan Rudira Pradikdan. So, tainted with blood means we'll all be contaminated. We want to have, want to enjoy, you want to have pure things. So, Shreya Bhaktan Baiksham Apihaloke. It is better to subsist by begging for food without having to kill the elders though it is a cause of infamy in this life, it would not create impediment in the next life. Why would it be a cause of infamy in this life? Anyone can say? Because um, the other side, like uh, Duryodhan and others, will think that he is not capable of fighting. All right. Yes, they made they may describe you as being cowardly. That he ran away from the battle. He was afraid to die. He knew he couldn't defeat us. So he ran out, he ran away, turned away. Yeah, uh, yes, Krishna mentioned this in later part of this chapter, I guess, Maharaj. What? What does he say? I mean, the same thing Krishna mentions in the later part of this chapter, I guess that uh, they will not think that you are uh, magnum, uh, you, they will not consider your magnanimity, but they will consider you as cowardly. Mm -hmm. And especially to become a beggar, that just look, this person is, become, is coming begging. You know, people are not usually very kind to beggars, especially materialistic people, hard-hearted people. They will criticize people coming to trouble us, the beggars, these people. They often look down in society. In society. They're, they're beggars. Western countries, you're not allowed to beg. It's illegal. You can, it's a crime to beg. Of course, in, in the Vedic culture, begging is allowed, but begging is only allowed by who? 
Brahmanas. The Brahmanas, right. The Brahmanas, they can, they can accept charity. They're allowed to accept charity and they're also allowed to give charity. And of course, it doesn't usually happen very often, but <laughs> they are allowed to accept charity. But the, the, you don't find them giving charity very often. And then it will, it will not create impediment in the next life. Why not? What will not? It will not create an impediment in the next life. What's going to happen? No sinful reactions. No? Huh? No sinful reactions. Yes, well, if he's not going to fight, right? He's not going to kill anyone. He's just going to li live a very simple, frugal life, living by begging. He's not, he, he's, he's certainly going to do a lot of austerity. And so, next life, he can enjoy better. There's a story, Prabhupada, Jiva Goswami says, Raja Putra Chan, Charanjiva Majiva Rishi Putraka. The, the king's son don't die because he's enjoying so much that when he dies next life he will suffer more. The, and then, it's, then it says also Majiva Rishi Putraka, the Rishi's son, may your death come soon because the Rishi is living. He's living in the forest, he's enjoying nothing, no enjoyment, he just lived a very simple life. So, he's encouraged life, you will enjoy all your austerities. All right, so. Bunjaya Bogan Radira Pradigdan. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. If Bhishma and Drona are all, if the elders are killed, then our enjoyment will will not be this. We won't be able to enjoy without thinking that we have been the cause of the death of such great souls. So the point is brought up that uh, Bhishma and Drona, they're very, they're seniors, particularly Drona is a guru. So the question is, can the guru be given up? When is the guru, when is the guru, because uh, it may, may be argued like that, that Bhishma and Drona they, they, they don't have to be given the respect which Arjuna wants to give them because they, have, they haven't acted in a very pious manner. They haven't, they, they've t simply taken the side of Duryodhan. And Prabhupada describes in the purport why he took the side of Duryodhan, because of his financial assistance. So they should not have accepted such a position simply on financial consideration. Under the circumstances, they have lost the respectability of teachers. So sometimes in ISKCON we are faced with this. Not only in ISKCON, it happens in other organizations as well, but sometimes we have cases where the spiritual teacher deviates and they have to be abandoned, they have to be given up. Sometimes it happens, unfortunately. It's something we try, we try to avoid, but it, the, the material nature is so powerful. And so, so it happens 5,000 years ago. The argument is that Bhishma and Drona have also acted in a, a manner which was not properly fit, befitting their position. So they, can, they don't have to be given the same respect as teachers anymore. Like Bali Maharaj gave up uh, that noise of Sukracharya. Yes, Bali Maharaj gave up Sukracharya. All right. 
So going ahead to text number six, we see Arjuna, another reason for Arjuna not wanting to fight. He doesn't know what is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. Is it better I should go out there and fight and kill them all or maybe better just let them kill me? So indecision. This is the fifth reason for Arjuna not wanting to fight. And then we come to this famous verse, text number seven. Very important verse. Let's all chant it together. Karpanya dojo pahata swabhava Prichami samudhateta yeah, very important verse and certainly one you all have to remember. Arjuna is describing his situation. Dosha, dosha, faults. <laughs> one devotee told me, they said, you know, I have some doshas on my chart, you know, doshas. Maybe you all, have, if you look in our astro astrological charts, you may find you also have some doshas, some faults. So Arj Arjuna recognizes also he has some faults, he has some doshas. And his fault was karpanya, this miserliness. Mis miserliness, this karpanya. The Prabhupada describes the two words kripana and brahmana. There's kripana, miserly person, and the brahmana is supposed to be the opposite, generous person. So karpanya dosho pahata swabhava, nature, the nature. Arjuna is saying, my, my, due to my, miser, my fault of miserly nature, he said, what is the result? Dharma Samuda Cheta. I'm bewildered. I'm confused about my duty, what I should be doing. I'm confused about what is my actual Dharma. So this is the result the result of his miserly weakness. The miserly weakness, of course, that is the attachment to the body. Prabhupada talks about a miser. Miser may have a lot of money, doesn't spend it. He doesn't. He he likes to enjoy it. He likes to count it. He likes to look at it. He likes to smell it. Doesn't spend it. And so <laughs> that that's of course it's not very common, but that that you do get people like that. They're they're very miserly, and that miserliness is a weakness. It's a fault, and uh, we want to develop the generous mood. We should become like brahmanas. The brahmanas will sacrifice anything for others. So then Arjuna is fortunate because he has Lord Krishna with him, and so he turns to Lord Krishna. He said, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me? Yad Shreya Nishchitam Bruhi Tanme. What's the best thing for me? What should I do? Shishastiham Sadi Mam Twam Prapanam. The famous line, the last line, very famous, often quoted. Shishastiham, I am your disciple, a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. And so, such a wonderful verse. So, we. We want you, we have an exercise here, we'd like you, how many people do we have in the class this morning? Uh, 36, Maharaj. 36, oh my goodness, okay. So pairs, that means we have 18 pairs. And what we want you to do is to identify general principles drawn from Arjuna's dilemma and surrender to Krishna. So general principles, you know, you can write down one, two, three, you know, some principles which are there from Arjuna's dilemma. And then discuss how these principles are relevant 
in your own practice of Krishna consciousness. All right? We want to understand these things in relation to our own spiritual life. Maharaj, can you give an example? <laughs> well, general principle. One of the principles is that Arjuna is accepting Krishna as his spiritual guide. So he's, 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 he's able to understand the importance of having somebody to guide him. He doesn't think himself as being infallible, but he understands that there's somebody there who's superior and who can help him to come to solve his problem, to come to solve the, the situation. So you see some solution to the situation. Maharaj, you want this to be done as in this group itself, or you want as so, break? Yeah, you can, you can, uh, disc you can have a break also at this time. So, like uh, we'll, we'll, in breakout rooms, we we do it in breakout rooms in Zoom. Yes. Yes. Could we do that creating rooms and all, or uh, it can be any two devotees together so that it forms eighteen groups actually? Yes, any two devotees together. Yeah. Probably they can use chat box then for the discussion. So, so this will take take a you can take break also at this time, right? When will we regroup, Maharaj? Sorry? Uh, when when we will re regroup actually? Yeah, we'll regroup. You need at least maybe fifteen minutes or more. Okay. Later o'clock we can read this mm -hmm. Okay. So, Prabhu, you are assigning our uh, partner who we are discussing and the, we are in the breakout room also? No, Mar uh, no Mataji, we are not uh, going for a breakout room because many devotees are not uh, familiar with this uh, option. Probably we need some kind of guidance on that. Already uh, one devotee raised this concern. So, Probably you have to connect with your immediate uh, adjacent AOD in your Zoom. Like example, I will say, Lalita Mataji can connect with Achar Chandak Prabhu and Akshay Anand Prabhu can connect with Amrit Madhav Prabhu like both. In alphabetical order, it is already there. So that way we can do this. And chat. And no, chat. It will be Hemant Prabhu, I think it will be confusing because everybody is. This thing is not arranged alphabetically. Yeah, it's not arranged in a good way because my name is on top. I don't know who is uh, who wants. Yeah, everybody to sees the sequence differently, bro. Okay, it's then uh, let me let me create breakout rooms, eight in breakout rooms, and then yes. by eight we yeah. can have eight So eighteen may be difficult. Maybe you can still do five or six. Just the way we do it always. Yeah, you could do that. If you like, yeah. make five or six, make six groups, you know, six of six groups of six. Okay, 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 Mahesh. It'll be easier. You can set the end time, Prabhu. Sorry? You can set, set the end time in record rooms. The end time? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. That's right. Set countdown timer. Okay. After... Uh, okay. I will say 15 minutes from now. Okay, I'm opening up the uh, rooms and if you want, anyone has any doubts, I don't know, you, you can ping me on Telegram because I will also be in so, 
so my observation is i think devotees take a uh, good amount of time to join the room so maybe they are not aware how it happens so you will get a pop up telling join this room everybody on their screens whether you have joined from mobile or from your laptop so you have to click join the room immediately to get into that room yesterday's group discussion i saw <coughs> three of us joined in the beginning and then two other group members joined quite late after the discussion was over so that's why i was requesting join right away yeah i am opening all the rooms thanks thanks for uh, that to archer please join actually oh yes so kid came came okay hey maybe john
Sorry, Madhuri, who is not there actually? Yeah. Sudha, my mother, you are not in any of the groups, is it so? Uh, no, Prabhu. I have added you, and it shows only Maharaj and Chaitanya Hari Prabhu's names are only shown. Okay. I guess you are in uh, room number. Uh, Oh, you are not added anywhere. Yeah, as per uh, alphabetical order, I should be somewhere around room 5, if I'm not wrong, or room 6. Probably room 6, I think. Yeah, Shanti Madhavi is already there in room 5. I don't know uh, she's not joined. Um, okay. This is how I can do it. Uh, it seems that few of the others are also not part of the rooms. Uh, Mondira Madhaji, Shanti Madhaji, Akshayan Prabhu, and Sudami Madhaji here. But there is no option now to actually add because I can only join in any of them. Probably you can discuss here. The other uh, deputies, can can you confirm whether uh, you can hear us? Uh, Mondira Mataji, Shanti Mataji. Oh, shall we just join the room and go? Will it work? Did you get any uh, notification, Madhavi? No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, the problem is it shows only Mara's name and Chaitanya Hari Prabhu's name here as Anna saying. That is the problem. Otherwise, I will assign you. Actually, your name is not showing as a, not Anna. You will assign somewhere. I don't know. Where you are. No, okay. I can't. I mean, uh... So can I join the room, one of the rooms directly? Because there okay, is... So you being the host, you can, yes, I guess. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah, 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 yes, yes, definitely you can join. In oh. any, you can join in room uh, six, mother, where in only five devotees are there. I'm going to join room one, there are five devotees, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, yeah. that helps. Thank you.
Yes, Hare Krishna. This meeting is being recorded. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Is it everyone back now? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. So, yes, Maharaj. Uh, would anybody like to volunteer to lead off the discussion? We have six, six groups, all right? Divided into six, six groups. So, can we hear yes. from one of the groups? And uh, I uh, request uh, devotees who are uh, representing their groups to raise hand so that it will be easier once the other devotee completes. Uh -huh. And we, we may have to time box marriage uh, for at least some two, three minutes they have to complete. Right. So yeah, there should be some time limit. Right. Yeah, generally three minutes should be sufficient, you know. Yeah, so can we go ahead with uh, Rishikesh Prabhu Maharaj? Uh, okay, is... yeah. Yes, yes, uh, Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity. We are from uh, room number two, and we had Gopal Prabhu, Devajit, Prabhuji, uh, Devalina, Roy Mataji, and uh, Dayavan Prabhu, and I'm forgetting the name of the fifth Mataji, uh, fifth uh, and the, the participant, my apologies. Uh, in, in summary, uh, what we realized was that in this case, Arjun, first of all, had incomplete knowledge. And at the time we have incomplete knowledge can definitely put us into a troublesome situation. The best part was Arjun did realize that he needs help because his present situation and whatever he has learned is not solving his problem. So the good part is once we are in such a situation and we know our intelligence is not helping us either borrow the intelligence and seek the help of someone who has better intelligence than us, i.e. in this case, spiritual master. <clears throat> such situations do come up in our daily lives or in our material lives, and it could be in our workplace, it could be uh, even in temples, and, 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 and uh, we need to understand from this principle is whether the guidance could very well come from devotees within your own family, as Gopal Prabhu said, or it could very well come from the devotees in the temple who have been through working lives in the past, and we should be finding solution if we can't find on our own. We should be knowing that our knowledge could be incomplete and look for the higher guidance. Thank you, Maharaj. That's all we have. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So you bring out the point that Arjuna was uh, deficient in knowledge, that he needed to get that guidance, that knowledge, and how to properly act. Okay. Uh, yes, thanks Prabhu, Rishkesh Prabhu, and uh, Rohil Prabhu, your hand is raised. Hare Krishna everyone. Uh, so we were from group 5. We had Samraja Mataji, Shubhankar Prabhuji, Socharu Ratha Dasi Mataji, and Shyam Sundar Das Prabhuji in a group. So the broad principles that we were able to identify were, was, first is uh, we need to always be very much alert of what's going on around us. We need to identify the cause for our, our afflictions and need to understand the reasons for the perplexities in our life because and that's what basically our life is about to understand and have a goal about it 
once you identify a problem, we need to be uh, open about it. We need to be humble and accept it. Have acceptance about it. Once we understand what our problem is, we are open about it. We need to seek out help. And uh, by seeking out help, we need to seek out help from a, a bona fide spiritual master. It should not be like you know I seek help from a friend of mine, you know, and he gives me solution. And when we when we seeking out help as well, we need to understand that. Uh, the solution that we ask for was should not be for only our benefit, but should be for uh, a holistic. Should be it should provide us a holistic benefit. This is specifically given in the verse as well, where the word Shreya is used, which means all good. So it should uh, be good for all of us. And finally, we need to surrender completely. And by surrendering, we should also ensure that materialistic knowledge does not act as a barrier uh, in us. A few examples over here is, you know, uh, generally when we also do seva in temples, we always look out for, you know, sevas which, which we like, which we feel, you know, would be good for us, which is in my, our comfort zone. So this is also, you know, we think we are doing seva, but it's not, we feel it's good for us as well, but we are not uh, looking at what's good for the temple as a whole. So we need to ensure that we uh, follow uh, the instructions of senior devotees. Uh, no, a uh, few other points are added were also, we need to ensure that we are not overly attached with our family. Generally, you know, the uh, the solution that our spiritual master provides us, they might be a bit harsh, they might be a bit difficult, and we might get swayed away saying that, okay, this is too difficult, uh, I have attachment towards my family or a particular activity of mine. So that should not, you know, come in between. At times, uh, if you, another example that we have in our own Krishna consciousness practice as well is, you know, at times, uh, there are functions in our family, relatives or friends, it could be anything in our social life. And that might you know, act as an obstacle in our uh, spiritual activity as well. We need to be really open about all the facts that here. We need to, it could be as simple as presenting a case study, listing on all the facts and understanding what is good for me. So this is what we feel, you know, how this could, these principles could be applied in our uh, Krishna conscious practice. Okay, thank you Prabhu. So you talk about... Of course, uh, the guidance and then the surrender and taking up the right mood and applying ourselves to in, in devotional service. Okay. So, Last, Prabhuji, one thing is the help will not come unless we ask. We should ask. We should. Sorry, yes. And it's not on that point. So uh, it's also said that even Krishna won't answer unless we ask him openly. So we should not hesitate. If we surrender, Krishna will himself come and, you know, in some of some form or the other, will give us a solution to our problems. Okay, so we have to make the approach ourselves. We have to be willing to go up, go forward and, and, and seek the guidance and seek the shelter, seek the instructions. Yes. It, it may not just come so easily to us. We have to be willing to go out there and ask for help. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj. Thanks, thanks, Prabhu Roy Prabhu. And uh, uh, Rajiv Prabhu, you can get started. Hare Krishna, everybody. We have in our group, Ramya Vandana Mataji, Nima Mataji, Pavla Mataji, and Prasannatma Prabhu. What we discussed was, <clears throat> like, Arjuna was uh, very much confused. And uh, he was giving all sorts of material logic for not fighting. The exact reason was that, that he did not have a guru till that time. So what we discussed was, unless and until we have a guru, we will always be bewildered like this. Like Arjuna was quivering, his hands were quivering, Gandiva was slipping from his hand. That, was our, that is our situation. Till that time we do not approach a guru with our problems or whatever we have in our life. So for us, the best thing is, whenever we have got a problem, just go to the Guru and ask him simply, and he will give a simple solution, and just follow that solution. But what we actually do, we try to add our material logic to that. We try to solve problems on ourselves. That is where we are getting into difficulties. When we try to take material solutions for material problems, we will always be miserable. So we should try to find a spiritual solution even to a material problem. Just to go to the Guru, ask him what is the solution, and he will give a simple answer. And just follow that with faith in those words, and you, you'll be out of that problem. And we get daily these problems, maybe at work, at home, 
with colleagues, with in profession, everywhere we have got this problem. Even for material problem, please approach your spiritual Shiksha Guru or someone who is guiding you. He or she will give you the right solution and just follow that. And you will be happy, your, your heart will be light and you will be comfortable. That's what we have discussed. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you Prabhu. The importance of having guidance and taking the instructions to heart, following the instructions. Okay. Yeah. Next, uh, Swaha Devi Mataji. Hare Krishna. So the amazing members of our group, they know who they, who they are. This, um, they started with saying, first of all, Arjun took time. He thought about his situation. He did not immediately react. He responded. And secondly, he was, he is, so this is something a little bit uh, different from Rishikesh Prabhu that uh, he didn't know. Um, he is well versed in Kshatriya Dharma. He knows what he needs to be done. But just because of some weakness, he is facing all this dilemma. So then he asks, and he asks who? Someone who knows him in and out. So when definitely we have to take shelter, we have to ask, and we ask senior devotees, and we should ask senior devotees who know us. Because otherwise, they would advise something which can come up as unsolicited advice, or then we, or their, their advice we may not be able to follow. So that's the that's the thing when we choose whom to take advice from. And the other thing was advice, uh, taking shelter comes in many forms. This is uh, the one Mataji's comment. And we have Harinam, we have Bhag, Bhag, uh, Book Bhag, Bhag, Bhagwat, Person Bhagwat, so we can take shelter from uh, these, uh, these sources. So yeah, uh, this is um, one of the three of things that I thought. Forgive me and my team members if I forget something, forgot something. Okay, thank you, Madhuji. You're telling us how it's certainly an advantage if you, if you know the person, you have a personal relationship with someone, they know you and they know our problems, they can, they're better qualified to guide us. It helps a lot. Okay, certainly Krishna and Arjuna were known to each other. And Krishna understood Arjuna's situation. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, Madhavi. Uh, Ajay Chandra Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Hare Krishna, everybody. So in our group, uh, mainly we discuss points which are uh, pretty similar to all devotees who have contributed. So first thing we understood is uh, that all the problems that come in our life are mainly because of our bodily identification, which is uh, miserly weakness we all have. But the first thing or the preliminary uh, requirement for a, or a qualification for the disciple is we acknowledge that we have problem, we are in distress. And also we acknowledge that this problem cannot be solved by my own intellect. You know, Arjuna gave many, many reasons and those apparently seem to be Shastrik. Even we when we face a problem in our lives, we try to find out, as devotees, we try to find out through Shastras. But then, unless we have a personal guide, unless we humbly seek guidance, surrender to the guidance that is coming, our problem doesn't get solved. So, so uh, that, that's what we see from Arjuna's example. And if we have to get the best out of uh, the shelter of a guru or guide is that we should be able to surrender like Arjuna did uh, without presenting that I know this you know, what is your idea. So Arjuna is telling I don't know. You know whatever I know is confusing me more and more and I have become in 2.8 he's telling I'm not able to I'm totally indecisive. So that humility uh, is required to solve our problems. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Prabhu. And uh, Jagan Mohini Devi Mata. Hi, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, <laughs> Hi, Krishna. So I'm from group three. Um, most of our points are basically said already from the other groups. 
that Arjuna was feeling a lot of confusion. He was overwhelmed with a lot of material attachments and emotions was overflowing on him. Um, thinking that, you know, his family there and how could he, how could he fight his own family and stuff. And Arjuna started to question himself and he also had this dialogue with Krishna and himself. And he did not just blindly accept Krishna as a spiritual master. He knew who Krishna was and how qualified Krishna was. So this is something um, that well, devotees do. They have a relationship with the spiritual master, and that their spiritual masters be bonified and teach proper because we can't just accept any and anyone to guide us or carry us or link us to Parampara. So Arjuna had this relationship with Krishna as a friend, but he decides to put away, uh, not put away, sorry, but he decides to accept Krishna's guru and he accepts the role of a disciple and humbly accepted and he took Krishna's advice to heart and he decided to follow and clear his mind, clear his path and listen to what his spiritual master has to say now. And this can be relevant to many of us, some of our group members, she stated that she was lost and confused in Maya. You know, Maya overwhelmed us so much every step of the way Maya is there. Krishna is there, Maya is there, so it's always a juggle, always a fight, but we always have to remember that we have our spiritual master. We also have Shiksha Gurus as well. But so we have to always keep in mind that Krishna is there. We just have to accept him, ask him for help as some devotees mentioned before, we have to ask Krishna for help and just understand that Krishna is waiting for us as well. Mm. Hi, Krishna. Yes, good. Thank you. Mm. Nice. And uh, Maharaj, we, we are done with other rooms, but uh, Swagata Mataji, your hand is raised. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj, Pranam. I'm from group six. Actually, I would like to add something. Actually, Mataji forgot that uh, the second question that discuss how these principles are relevant in your own practice of Krishna consciousness. In this regard, I would like to say that in our present scenario, we see that uh, uh, some our senior members or my family members, my father, mother or brother, uh, they actually don't like this Krishna consciousness movement and due to what concept of life due to the attachment to uh, the, our family members we sometimes actually uh, think that okay we should not also do bhakti in this age uh, bhakti or devotional services for the old age so we should not think like this like Arjuna uh, because of just bodily concept of life and we must take shelter the advice of Gita or Lord Krishna thank you Maharaj <laughs> thank you Maharaj yes very important yes it's an important point that we do have that problem with the family and attachment. And sometimes it can be very difficult practicing Krishna consciousness. So Arjuna's dilemma has many points uh, which, are, which we do face in our own practice of Krishna consciousness. And that is a very, a very prominent factor which we face, that attachment to the family members. So. How did Arjuna deal with it? Arjuna dealt with it and his solution was surrender to Krishna. That he understood himself, that he was confused and so many different feelings and sentiments were there and he wasn't sure. He wanted to do the right thing and so he took shelter of Lord Krishna. And he knew that under the guidance of Lord Krishna, then he would certainly do the right thing. And this is, of course, the speaking of Bhagavad Gita. So in, in our own practice of Krishna consciousness, Arjuna's dilemma, Arjuna's confusion, Arjuna's miserly weakness, these are all things which we, we face in our own practice of Krishna consciousness. We have our own attachments, our own weaknesses, and that confusion, of course, is there. So the solution is to surrender to Krishna. 
So in, in our own practice of Krishna consciousness, as many of you, part, I like that point. Many of you brought up that uh, we should talk to Krishna. We have to, we have to, we have to want the help. We have to express our need. That please, please help me. I'm, I need your help. I need your shelter. And and that's true also. With the spiritual teacher, we, we shouldn't think a oh, spiritual teacher knows everything. He understands my situation you have to you have to you have to go forward and you have to express your your difficulty and your need for his help all right so thank you very much i thought it was a very useful exercise and certainly brought some new points to my attention in this matter okay we'll go ahead Maharaj, if you could take five minutes break i'm sorry to ask for this but uh, we had discussion of 15 minutes. <laughs> well, I, you know, I said you take a break when we we're having discussion, you know. <laughs> I wanted you to take the break at the time of the discussion. If you have to have another five minutes, uh, I don't know. I mean, does that... Okay, ever... no problem. No problem, no problem. We'll continue. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, so solving life's perplexities. Academic knowledge, scholarship, high position, etc. are all... What was... It's, Arjuna, it's not a question of wealth here in this particular case. What?